Welcome, and thank you for joining us with Michael Pulitz and his friends of the industry. Before we get started, we would like to share some housekeeping items for today's session. All audience members are in listen-only mode, which means you are muted. We will be monitoring audience engagement on the dashboard and do encourage you to participate by using the question pane. Please note this webinar is being recorded and will be available online in the coming week. Now, without further delay, let me introduce our host, Michael Pulitz, publisher of Food and Beverage Magazine and author of Guide to Restaurant Success. With him will be Elizabeth Blau and Brendan Collins. Thank you for being with us today and please take it away. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Elizabeth Blau and Brendan Collins. Two legends in the culinary world, the restaurant world. Elizabeth has uh, consulted for the biggest names in hospitality, as well as the restaurant world, and also owns a number of her own restaurants and manages a number of restaurants as well. And Brendan, with his French culinary training, has worked with the best, Michelin star. Brendan, I'm not sure, do you have your own Michelin star? I know the restaurants. Uh, no, I mean, a chef never has his own Michelin stars. It always goes to the restaurant. Uh, but I've worked in restaurants and been head chefs of restaurants that have won Michelin stars, yes. So I'd like to say that Brendan is a Michelin star winner then. So we say, and now I haven't seen Brendan in a long time, but when I first we first met was at Waterloo. I don't know if you remember those days. Brendan. Actually, I think the first time we met was at the Pally House with Kit Pardue. That was the was that the first time we met? That was the first time, yeah, yeah. So we were so we we happened to have been with one of was I guess your friends. He was cooking with you at the time. Kip is an actor. Yes. yes. And you may know him from he he used to play he played Sunshine on Remember the Titans. He did. The very, the very handsome boy, and Brendan got him into the kitchen and just destroyed everything about him, right? Just ripped him to shreds. I don't know about so, that. I think uh, I think it was mutual. Right. So so Brendan's in Los Angeles. Elizabeth is in, are you in Las Vegas right now, Elizabeth? I am. So what we're going to talk about today, just for everybody here, we remember they're all at the rest of the Florida restaurant show. Everyone's sort of watching to learn how to, how to, either turn their businesses around right now, given what we're doing, the situation, the COVID situation, they may even be interested in starting their own hospitality business, whether it's a caterer, or catering, food truck, their restaurant. So we'd like to give a little bit of advice from experts like yourselves on what they what they should be looking for, right? Like when I wrote the book, I sort of wrote a bunch, of, I still owe you a book, Elizabeth, I know. They, uh, <laughs> a lot of it was, you know, what to look for right? Look for an opening and, and how you cast, you know, your chef and, all, and this, look at Brendan. That's a chef I would cast Elizabeth, by the way. Look at this look, the fate, right? This is a guy, right? So, so let's start with Elizabeth the, and then we'll work our way into Brendan and what people should, what can you do to, to, to save yourself right now in, in case people are having financial trouble, right? Like what can they do? Maybe some steps. I know I'd love you to talk about the teddy bears if we could. That's sure. Um, I mean, you know, it's, it's unprecedented. We've um, here in Las Vegas lived through some, you know, tragic events. We obviously all shared 9-11, but we had um, an incredibly horrendous mass shooting here. And so, you know, we, we've had our, our worlds toppled upside down, but I mean, what are we going on seven months now? I mean, it just, it, it seems endless. And, you know, we're watching our colleagues around the country, Brendan, I mean, you guys don't even have indoor dining. Um, if we didn't have indoor dining in Las Vegas um, the last few months, we would be out of business because it's been 115 degrees, although it's been pretty hot in LA too. Yeah, we've had our heat waves for sure. Yeah. So um, it's just, it's absolutely kind of surreal. Today we get to, um, to reopen our bars, but um, instead of just taking away the chairs at our bar, um, our restaurant here, one of them in Las Vegas is called Honey Salt. Um, and so I, my son is going to be, um, he's going to be 16 in a, in a week, Michael, and he is now 6'2". <laughs> <laughs> so I know he was a little peanut when you first yes. met. Um, but we filled the bar. I, I called some girlfriends because uh, we're past teddy bear days and, you know, and, and the bar is filled with bears. And it's just meant to be something that when you walk in is a smile because I think we all need a smile um you know right now uh there's just there's so much tension you can feel it people are so tense people are rude um you know people don't want to wear masks so um you know really it's 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 about you know just reinforcing 
um, with whatever staff that you you have left, whether it's health and safety standards, whether it's encouraging them to get out and, and vote, whatever you can do to you know to really make your restaurant family feel safe, feel comfortable, and keep that morale up because um, you know oftentimes we're we're dealing with with more difficult customers. Um, you know our restaurants, whether it's Buddy V's or, or Honey Salt. Uh, we serve comfort food, so it's it's a lot easier because it's seeming that you know that's what people are are, are looking for at this time. So we're doing family style men menus, um, you know, at a fixed price to try and bring down costs because you know so many people are out of work or worried about losing their jobs, and so um, you know the financials are are are, are very important um, to people. And you know we've also been able. Many states are are allowing. Um, takeout liquor programs and so we've created cocktails to go we've created uh, wine pairings um, to go and you know it's just it's time to to be creative and and to you know to really I mean I just have to you know stress that flexibility um, you know during this time is is just is critical um, you know in order to um, to make things smooth sorry about that everybody that's all right. Brendan, what, what are you doing differently? I mean, obviously outside dining. So um, listen, they, for me, it comes from two, two places because I have two restaurants, two very, very different restaurants. One is Fia, uh, which we've just celebrated our first year, which is in Santa Monica and has a wonderful patio. Um, and believe it or not, we're actually doing better numbers this year than this time last year. So, and by the way, I understand, I understand Sylvester Stallone was just at Fia. You, you know, we, we are a place where stars love to come and enjoy what we're doing. Um, we're thankful for that. Um, yes. We've done, you know, we've done incredible work over there. We've, we've recreated the menu, cut it down by about 30%. So we would be able to, you know, cut our labor force down by the same amount. Um, you know, obviously we, we tried to pivot in the beginning to a to-go program, but we were too late to the game. Um, and also not a really well-known enough restaurant to make it work for us. Um, slowly but surely now, since we introduced it, uh, we're getting, I don't know, maybe $1,000 a week, maybe $1,500 a week in to-go right. orders, which is, you know, it's not brilliant, but it's, it works. Hi. <laughs> Uh, but it works, you know. It's it's definitely a, a program that is 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 increasing incrementally, weekly and monthly. Um, but uh, I'll be, you know, and we're also doing the same thing with the to go wines, to go cocktails, things like that. But that is definitely not what's helping us in any way, shape, or form. The fact is that we we put a real menu together. Um, I didn't. I I wasn't. I was uneasy on putting like a lackadaisical menu together just to try and cut costs. I said, if we're gonna open, we have 75 seats. Let's open with a real menu. Let's do real food. Let's not, you know, let's not let's not try and do like, you know, a 10% size menu and you know have three or four guys in the kitchen. Let's go balls to the wall and let's do it and let's see what happens. And 100% um, it's worked. 100%. Um, we've been able to add staff, which is amazing. Not, diff not easy to find staff, believe it or not, especially with the amount of restaurants that have closed. You would think it would be easier to find staff, but it really isn't. Um, so we've been able to increase our staff. We've been able to increase, um, uh, we pay a percentage rent at the restaurant. Our, our landlord was very cool with us as she allowed us to pay our percentage rent. Our percentage rent is now at the base rent that it was initially because the restaurant's doing so well. I think we're, we're close to $100,000 weeks right now. So, not on wood, yeah. fear is doing phenomenal. Um, second to that, I the second is, is the, how often now, so the, now we're going to get into, and I want Elizabeth to hear this because she's she, this is, so that's sort of fine dining, right? That's so, your yeah, fear, fear is doing phenomenally well. Secondly, to that, I decided to open up a pub. Um, at the, uh, and I don't know if you guys know Los Angeles at all, but it's at the fair, the original Fairfax Farmers Market by the Grove. Oh, I love it. So we're in a high dense um, place, lots of walking traffic, or you know traditionally a high walking you know high walking destination. Um, very simple comfort in British comfort food, uh, kind of a rock and roll theme, um, and uh, it's 
you know, we, we opened, we, we, I had a chef in mind that I'd had for a long time who'd been working with me for a long, long time. So he was, that was easy. Um, I'd lost the restaurant that I had in Venice, Larry's, that I'd had for 10 years um, because I just didn't feel like renegotiating the rent with the landlord. You know, we were at our 10 year, the end of our 10 year lease. Um, and to be honest with you, the late, the lease that we had been paying was great. But when we've got no, um, you know, absolutely zero tourists, where we're in a high tourist area, it was on the Venice boardwalk. You know, the only people that are going down on the Venice boardwalk right now were homeless people, you know, <laughs> certainly not the kind of people that are coming in and eating, you know, foie gras burgers and, you know, truffle fries. So uh, we, we just decided to let that one go. So I had a full team, basically got very lucky, had a full team, general manager, assistant manager, you know, sous chefs, line cooks, basically just went, you come from here and <laughs> you go here. So the opening of that restaurant was actually very, very easy. The easiest restaurant opening I've had in 10 years, at least. Um, but we're having we're, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're doing great. Where we're struggling is lunches, which, you know, we were hoping were going to be a big part of our um, revenues. And Monday and Tuesday nights, like no one is about. And we're talking about a place that, you know, millions and millions and millions of people visit pre-COVID all the time. Now, none of the tourist buses are coming through. None of the tourists are coming through. A lot of the people that are, you know, Hollywood and Glendale and all those people that used to come through, they're not coming through. So we're struggling there. But it's a small menu, small restaurant. We're able to pivot. We were lucky that we were able to use some of the sidewalk and some of the courtyard, which is inside the farmer's market, to add additional seating. So what we're losing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're able to make up during the weekends, which is same again, knock on wood, thank you. Um, but I think we're probably doing about 30 grand a week there right now, where what we would really like to be doing is more 50, 55, 60. Uh, but same again, we've been open a month, so I'm not panicking yet. Um, we're able to control our costs. Uh, we're able to control our labor. Um, so, you know, we're getting there. But advice for people, if you don't have a name or if you don't have a reputation, um, probably best not do it right now. And my, 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 my advice would be don't do it. You know, I'm lucky. I've got, I have a reputation. I've been in Los Angeles, you know, 18 years. I've built a name and I've built a reputation myself. Um, and we're able to, you know, to, to fill restaurants and fill spaces. Um, you know, and on top of that, you know, I'm also good at my job. <laughs> you know, we cook very good, consistent food. And people know that, you know, years and years of knowing that when, when you come to a Brennan College restaurant, you get good quality, consistent, well, you know, tasty food. So, um, you know, thankfully I've, I've got that reputation and I'm able to, you know, just keep somewhat moving forward. You know, I, I definitely feel very fortunate, uh, but I know there are a lot of people out there that are hurting, hurting a lot. So I think, you know, Brendan's point is just is exactly what I was talking about, about flexibility. I mean, you know, being able to take one concept, flip it to another is extraordinary. Also, we're all hoping, you know, for landlords who are cooperative and, and that percentage rent is, you know, is kind of, you know, the yeah, Hail Mary you. for us all. Because I can tell you, our landlords, um, they don't want to budge. They, they got their PPP dollars. They got full rent during um, March, April, and May when, you know, when the world was, you know, completely shut down. Summer is always a disaster here. So we have even a double disaster, you know, adding the, the pandemic. And, you know, they feel like they shouldn't participate in any of the, of the pain. And so you're going to see landlords across the country with empty spaces. And I don't know who, who's going to fill them. And also, um, Brendan, to, to, to your point about, you know, doing whatever you can to keep the lights on. And so we formed an innovative program because no matter how bad things are for us, you know, when the school systems shut down here and our major food bank, Three Square, had to um, completely change its model to these remote locations, you know, we knew that there were going to be seniors, there were going to be kids. Um, there were going to be those who, um, you know, were, were physically um, at risk for health conditions who weren't going to be able to go to senior centers or community centers or churches to get their food that they literally need to, to subsist. And 
our food bank closed its kitchen and so we partnered with four restaurants um we uh it's called delivering with dignity uh, we have an army of what we call food heroes who actually come to the restaurants and pick up the meals and deliver them uh right to the doorsteps of these uh people who are most vulnerable in our community and i think we've hit about 200,000 meals um you know during the, the last seven months and uh, we get paid six dollars for a meal so you know nobody's coming to honey salt and <laughs> getting a meal for six dollars but you know these are meals being you know cooked with you know with dignity you know they're not fema they're not emergency meals they're you know they're hot uh nutritious food um and even that six dollars you know a couple thousand dollars um a week is it's keeping staff employed it's keeping our lights on and so um it may not seem like a lot but whatever you can you know you can do to to save those those dollars now if we could get the delivery companies to you know to get on board with with some flexibility because you can't afford 30 percent you know to a delivery company and so we're certainly encouraging pickup in the height of the pandemic we were even taking some of our people that we had to lay off and um because obviously we had no front of house um and and they were delivering you know i mean i was happy to make sure um so really it's just it's all about protecting you know the the employees that you know that we do have keeping them employed and you know and keeping the lights on i mean i don't think anybody is looking you know at, at profitability right now that's pie in the sky but um you know just keeping what we've all worked so hard um to do over the last years and so that's why when you hear numbers from the irc the independent restaurant coalition of you know potentially 85 percent of restaurants in america closing i mean it's like every day it's an obituary you know oh my gosh this restaurant closed that restaurant closed and it's it's devastating for for people like us who have you know who have committed our our careers to um and and are just so passionate about this um it seems unreal but you know unless we get help unless we get some state and federal um help unless these politicians get their head out of their arse and uh you know <laughs> actually do something before. i have a feeling it's not coming though i've got to be honest with you i have a feeling it's not coming i not think you know um all, all, all the all the chatter that i'm hearing is you know you just gotta you gotta kind of figure it out for yourselves um i think one of the you know one of the toughest parts like you say is listening to the obituary of restaurants where you know you've got friends who you know are busting their ass like working ridiculous hours and have gone on and done amazing charitable work within the communities uh, both pre-covid and during uh, pre-covid and during covid and have still ended up losing their restaurants um you know and secondly to to you know to reiterate what you were saying about the delivery companies it's always been a scam it's always been a complete scam um thankfully in los angeles they did a moratorium where they um stopped the delivery companies charging the you know extortionate percentages uh, but it ended, and when it ended, no one pushed for it to to come back. And it wasn't like it ended because restaurants were allowed to open and people got back to work. It just ended. Um, the same with you know the eviction notices and things like that. You know now people who have you know not been able to be evicted from their homes. And California has certainly Los Angeles has a, a, an incredible home shortage. So you've got you know cooks and line cooks and wait staff and you know managers and things like that who don't technically in a, in a in a city as expensive as what los angeles is make a huge amount of money it's not like you know they're not they're not snatching money away you know they're working paycheck to paycheck mostly uh now now they don't they don't have you know they're having trouble finding homes you know uh and you know a lot of these landlords um who are going to benefit from a lot of these evictions eventually you know um need to be account, you know held accountable for what they're doing seriously well, they're, they need to be they seriously need to be held accountable well they're going to benefit because now they have fully equipped restaurants that they can lease out at discount rates as everyone knows and, and we see that happening so hopefully hopefully they'll wake up at some point and we won't know that for a while right they're, they're going to start losing money big time because people just can't start opening restaurants they just have empty spaces full of equipment right you know what about education right let's we like that's a whole factor that we haven't talked about elizabeth i saw that you're going to be doing some speaking at, at the uh unlb 
right? The school of uh, what do they the, the uh, school and the hospitality uh, college. The hospitality college, and I and I know that it's four levels, and I actually had a meeting in there last week, and it's a brand new, gorgeous building that we had that big event in, right? And we'll talk about that. And literally, it was me and Mark in the meeting in the entire building. Like there was hardly anybody, and there was no students allowed. So how how is that? And I know we're, you were working prior to all this on the Women in Hospitality initiatives that nationally. So that's sort of taken that's a pivot itself, right? Because now it's so maybe you could get into that a little bit. But how about you know all of our you know our chefs and our cooks and our front of house staff and our managers who have children and the public schools are closed here. So you know they're they're zooming from home, but you know. They certainly can't zoom alone, so um, you know there there's tremendous stress on on families trying to figure out you know childcare, trying to figure out alternatives, um, the uh, you know trying to you know to do this this schooling online. It, I mean, it's first of all it's unhealthy for these these kids. Um, you know they're sitting, they're fidgeting, they're trying to watch. Um, it's it's devastating. I mean, we're we're so fortunate. Cole is actually my son is is back at school, um, but a lot of the the classes and the class that we just launched for the Women's Hospitality Initiative with UNLV and and the Culinary Institute of America, um, it's Zoom. It's it's online, but uh, it's very interactive. The students uh, really lead the class, um, and then the guest speakers who are industry leaders. Um, you know, come on. Uh, so it's 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 weird, but um, you know, it, it it's working, and uh, you know, you see their their little faces. And at the Culinary Institute of America, there's you know, there's there's very specific rules. I mean, you have to be, you know, dressed for class. You have to be, you know, um, online in in a quiet space. Um, you have to have your camera on um, so that the, uh, the 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 teachers know you know what you're you're doing and that you're paying attention, but you know, it's it's a very very stressful time, and um, you know, I, I just can't even imagine these kids who have spent four years of high school to get into you know and working extracurriculars and jobs and and volunteering, you know, to only you know find out that they're not going back to to school. So um, it's a challenge. Brendan, what are you saying with with culinary students and guys that were staging and all this stuff? What are they doing? Well, I mean, it's really hard to say, you know, it, it, it feels like a lot of people, um, you know, LA is a very transient city and people come here. There's not a lot of people that are like from here. Um, and it feels like a lot of the ones that came here went back again, wherever, wherever they came from, they went back to, um, you know, as, I, as I'm talking to my cook saying, hey, listen, reach out to your friends. We need cooks. We need, we need people, you know, we're, we're, we're getting busier and, you know, fingers crossed, they're going to let us open a portion of the inside dining, for, you know, so we're going to need to increased staffing and, and all my guys are like no one's here chef they've all gone they've all left so los angeles the city is is um and certainly the younger you know the younger kind of workforce of the city uh for for us in the culinary industry anyway um it seems to have kind of dissipated a little bit because literally you know you're in a really expensive city and there was no work for months so if you're getting you know if you're getting a thousand dollars a week in LA or a thousand dollars a week in Maryland, a thousand dollars a week in Maryland goes a lot further than what it does in Los Angeles. So, you know, I think, I think a lot of the people left now, whether or not they come back or whether they, whether they, you know, choose to stay where, where they are for the moment, you know, I've got old sous chefs that, that, that went to, you know, Maine and are working in Maine, you know, in just, they did, they just had to leave. There was nothing for them here. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, as the weather changes and you know the East Coast gets freezing cold, uh, they'll they'll kind of you know sort of navigate and, um, and come back. I hope because so, we're, we're you know we're certainly getting busier. But to, so to, let, me, to, let me ask you this, friend: On your outside seating, is it was it already set up as your patio, or did you take over some of the sidewalk? And no, 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 no. We had we already had uh, you know we already had patio at Fear, and we already had patio space at um, at the at the Market Tavern. You know, it's Los Angeles. It's it's you know you, you, your restaurant has to have patio space if you want to be you know somewhat successful, um, because you can we can do our fresco dining all year round here. You know maybe right. maybe three days in February when we get a spot of rain, you you know you can't. But most of the year you can be outside. So we you know in that respect we were fortunate. And I went to restaurants, restaurants that I liked very much, 
Um, and, you know, myself and my wife went out for dinner when they, you know, everybody started going out again. And you're in a parking lot, you know, and it's you feel like you're in a parking lot. You know you're in a parking lot. Right. David, uh, so one, one of my friends in New York, New Jersey, David Burke, I don't know if you've met David before, Elizabeth's friends as well with David. Uh, David yeah, said, okay, David said that every, he, he has some at Asbury Park and different, he's got about what, how many, a lot of restaurants, 20 something restaurants, Elizabeth probably with the same one. Um, he said every day you have to set up a wedding and break it down. It was like setting up for a wedding and breaking it down. It was right. always on the lawn or in the parking lot, like you just said. And, it, and, it, and then the cost goes up because you're paying right. everyone to do it. It takes hours to do break up, set up, break down. So it's good to hear that you, and unfortunately we don't, but well, we don't have to do that right now. We just, in, in Vegas, right, Elizabeth, thank God. So. I mean, finally the weather's getting nice, so, you know, outdoor dining is becoming a thing again, you know, for another month until it gets windy and then cold. So Yeah, I mean listen, we're we're all at we're all at the mercy of the weather. I mean, you know, Los Angeles Los Angeles people in Los Angeles are acclimated to sunny and seventy. As soon as it goes down to sixty five, they've all got their North Face jackets and gloves on. <laughs> you know what I mean, and you're you're spending a fortune on on uh, butane gas for the heaters. So you know we're all we're all kind of um, we're getting sort of gearing up for that. And panicking a little bit because you know um, it's amazing how uh, thin-skinned you get living in Los Angeles. Even, even for an Englishman, it gets to 65, and I'm like, Oof, get the coat on. <laughs> so, Brendan, um, I would ask you. I know I'm sorry to interrupt. At the um, down down in, in LA, at the other in the market, right, the Market Tavern. Are you inside the Farmers Market, the original buildings? Is that where your where your operation is? No, no, no. We're on the periphery. So we're on the we're on the corner of Fairfax and Third uh, Street. So we're oh, basically okay. I don't know if you Adam went, we're across the road from the Trader Joe's basically. Right. So we're on the we're on one of the corner we're in one of the corner buildings just on the parking lot. So we it's it's a good spot, you know, and you know, um as and when we get back to some form of normalcy, um I, I'm assuming and hoping it's going to be a successful little spot. It's very, very English. I mean it's it's like a you know, an episode of Downton Abbey on Sunday in there when people are eating their roast beef and Yorkshire puddings. Um Fish and chips. Yeah, you know, and again, we were lucky. We, you know, we we we'd set up to have a to have a patio because we had space to put a patio, um, and that and that's re realistically the only reason that we opened. We were we, you know, believe it or not, on March the sixteenth, when we were we were planning to bring on, you know, all of our management team and start the training process and the hiring process. Well, March fifteenth was the Sunday that they closed us down. So, and this had been a two and a half year process between negotiating with landlords, signing leases, building it, dealing with Los Angeles as a city, which for getting permits and getting sign-offs is never easy. But Los Angeles is not the most business friendly city to deal with. So it's two and a half years of really hard work and a lot of preparation to then, you know, the day that you're supposed to be bringing management teams on and getting the whole, you know, the real process, the real hard work and the, but the rewarding part of it to, to, you know, to some sort of fruition, we were closed down. And uh, we got, we were basically paying rent. Um, and then we got to, must be August. Yeah, it's August. And I was like, let's just open it. We can, you know, we can fit 60, we can fit 60 seats on the patio where we should be able to fit a hundred seats. We can fit, um, you know, 20 seats in this part of the the courtyard and then we'll we'll pay for a parking space and we'll, we'll put another we'll put another 10 seats in the parking space so we bought ourselves about 80 seats um and, and then just you know opened the doors get, did our training hired staff crossed our fingers and uh we're we're, we're not we're, we're losing a little bit of money but uh, we're certainly not um hemorrhaging cash to the point where we're like okay let's forget this and start again next year so uh, you know, building, building, building. But you know, <laughs> I don't know how many, how often I can say this. I feel lucky. I feel fortunate that the two restaurants that that I'm involved in and running right now are not hemorrhaging cash, and I'm not having to fire people, and we're we're not we're certainly not making the sort of money that we would like to make. Um, but you know, I think I'm employing 50 people at Fear, 35 wow. people, you know, 35 people at Market Tavern. So I feel like we're doing our bit to at least keep people in work for now. So that so so the Fairfax location is very tourist driven. Elizabeth has a restaurant in the Venetian, right? 
And she also has a local restaurant, right? Honey Salt is for really off the strip locals. Venetian, she has Buddy V's, right? We all know who he is. So that's that alone with his name, you think he's gonna draw people in, right? How, is that true, Elizabeth? How is how comparatively speaking to two different restaurants, how do they compare? Well, you know, I, I think that what we've done during the pandemic is um, for Honey Salt is really build trust in the community. And that's what's important when you have a, a restaurant with a, you know, a local audience. So um, the health and safety standards, the, you know, the note that we staple onto your bag from, you know, from Kim and I, you know, just telling, you know, our, our appreciation, um, you know, the hand sanitizers, the teddy bears, you know, just, just things like that, you know, the notes that we get from people, um, you know, that they, they really feel comfortable, they feel safe how we've, um, you know, we've done the, the social distancing. Um, Buddy V's, you know, the Venetian is probably at 70% occupancy on, on the weekends. It's a different crowd. Um, it's a much lower um, average daily rate for the, for the hotel rooms. Um, Venetian is a huge convention hotel. So the business Monday through Friday has basically evaporated. So, you know, you can have a Monday that a 7,000 room hotel has, you know, 20% occupancy with probably more than 40 restaurant options just inside that that one um, hotel. So luckily I think that with Buddy V's we're um, approachable, casual, American, uh, Italian cuisine, um, all, you know, homemade from, from scratch. Obviously, you know, Buddy and the Lasser family are beloved. So, um, you know, we're, we're fortunate that, you know, I mean, I think this weekend we had, you know, 250 reservations um, on the books for, for Saturday night. So it's a big restaurant. Um, we're fortunate enough to be able to have 50% occupancy. And frankly, we've been doing it now safely for four months. So I, I'm not sure why this has become such a drama, you know, uh, around the around the country. Um, so um, I, I think we're proof of it here in Las Vegas. We've kept our numbers down. Um, so it's like <laughs> we got to get on with things safely. Are people, are people wearing masks in Las Vegas? Are they are they abiding by the rules? You have to wear masks. Um, there are always yahoos um, or the people that are wearing the mask below their nose. Um, so yeah, I mean on a on a daily basis, there's an issue. I mean, there's always some you know irate lunatic that wants to. Um, you know, completely berate my 18 year old hostess, um, you know, because it's the law, you have to, to wear it. Um, I see people walking into the restaurant and, you know, or other restaurants and they, you know, they rip their masks off uh, before they even get to the table. And, you know, there's not a lot you can, can do. There's, you know, there's a sense of, um, you know, kind of whatever you want. I mean, you know, my friends in, in, in New York, tell me that uh, people are just walking into uh, drug stores and filling their bags and just walking out and um, the police aren't responding and uh, it's, 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 it's devastating. So luckily for the most part, um, people are acting in intelligently here. Uh, you know, late at night when people are consuming alcohol and the intelligence factor naturally goes down, you know, we're, we're seeing more of an issue. Yeah, I mean, I think I think similarly in Los Angeles, we're, we're um, you know, for the most part, people are abiding by the rules of wearing masks. But I think you've always got, you know, an element of stupidity, um, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, we're, I think the, the, the you know the, the numbers keep, in, you know, they're kind of all over the place, aren't they? But it seems to me that the places where, you know, uh, it would seem that people are, um, are less intelligent and less likely to do as what they're asked. Uh, their numbers seem to be getting worse. Um, when the places where, you know, just abide by the rules and listen to science and just, you know, the numbers seem to be getting better. So, but look what's happening. Uh, you know, um, for you in the UK, I mean, you well, know, you know, that's what's happening. I've got friends in the UK that are like, I'll never wear that mask. And I said, okay, well, then you're going to constantly be shut down because this <laughs> is not going to change. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. you, it was the same with Brexit. When I told them, don't vote Brexit, you'll, be, you'll regret it. And they did. You know, it's the same stupidity. You know, um, you know. Sometimes, sometimes you have to uh, listen to people that are smarter than you instead of listening to your own lunacy. 
Uh, but we, you know, that's the world as it is, unfortunately. So yeah, what piece of advice would you guys? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Vancouver, well, let me hear about Vancouver. Yes, let's hear about Vancouver. Vancouver um, we have to stop serving alcohol at 10. So the uh, government has gotten involved in trying to, uh, you know, control. So you have to stop serving at 10 and restaurants have to be closed by 11, like out. So, I mean, it's, it's really devastating. Um, you know, young people want to go out to eat at, you know, nine o'clock at, at night. So, um, you know, it's very interesting because even here in Las Vegas, I see reservations for dinner at four, at five, um, you know, people are really changing habits, which, you know, I find um, interesting. And then some kind of like global miracle has happened because people seem on Yelp and TripAdvisor to have found some humanity in them. And for the most part, oh, I noticed that. You know, people are are nice. I mean, you know, we got a, a woman today that was hilarious. I read it. She says, I'm only giving one star because that's all I can give. I came with my family at 530 and the restaurant was only two thirds full and I didn't have a reservation. And it's like, are you aware of social distancing? Are you aware we're only allowed to seat the restaurant 50 percent? Um, but, you know, you're always going to get yahoos. But for the most part, um, I, I'm seeing a, a greater kindness in, in people when they are, um, I don't know if you're seeing the same thing, Brendan, in LA. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, we listen, Yelp's always one of those things, isn't it? I mean, thankfully, we, we try and do our best job. We use we use Yelp as a tool. Um, we've, we've definitely had people on there saying that we're not um, abiding by the rules of social distancing, which we very much are, um, but some people are terrified and I don't know why those terrified people are even coming out because they're never going to be satisfied unless they're sat in a dining room on their own. Um, you know, but I think I agree with you for the most part, people are just happy to be out and to be socializing and to, you know, have sort of that herd mentality where they actually feel comfortable. Um, and, and, you know, and, you know, same again, we were locked up for so long and, you know, I mean, I love my wife and child dearly, but God damn, I was ready to get out, you know? <laughs> Um, so I think a lot of people feel the same way as we do. You know, there's, there's you know, it's almost like a, a feeling of freedom. And I think one of the beautiful things about when you go into a restaurant um, and you sit down, it's just that one or two hours where you do feel normal again, where it just feels like, oh God, the world outside's not absolutely mental. It's not absolutely crazy. So you just sit and enjoy it. Sit back, take it in and enjoy it, you know? Um, Thankfully, you know, and I don't, I don't think people really realize, you know, that restaurant workers, chefs, front of house, back of house, we are literally risking our lives to give you service. So be fucking grateful, you know, don't be a dick. Be grateful. We want you to wear a mask, put a fucking mask on, you know, <laughs> very simple. It's not that difficult, is it? Or get out. No problem. There's, there are other people that want your seat. Trust me. There are, there are plenty of good people that want your seat right now. I'm going to get hats made for my hostesses. Just be fucking grateful. <laughs> Brendan used to have, Brendan used to have all the guys wear the bowl. What are those called, Brendan? At the water yeah, the bowler hats, the bowler hats. The bowler hats. They were amazing. Everyone looked like Charlie Chaplin. It was the most amazing. I walked in this restaurant and I go, this is, and that was 20 years, like 18 years ago, Brendan? How long ago was No, that? no, no, like 10 years ago, 10 years. Okay. It was, it was, it was so great. So we got a couple of minutes left. What advice can we give to other restaurant tours or caterers other than just hang on to for your dear life, right? So what else can we give them really briefly and then we can wrap this up? You know, you can try and work with your your vendors. Um, some of them are, are being flexible on their on their payment schedules and you know, even even getting credits. Um, you know, there is a lot of humanity and, and compassion out there. So you've got to get creative and, and you have to ask. I mean you know, some companies are asking some of their, you know, their top staff to take, um, you know, a, a pay cut for a period of time. Um, we did that and, and um, we were also able to, to compensate, you know, once we got, um, you know, some of the subsidy money, we were able to, to give the, that money back to, to our team, but um, hang in there. I mean, you know, there's, there's got to be a, a, a rainbow at the end of this. It's, really a nightmare. Yeah, I would uh, obviously um, agree with all of what uh, Elizabeth's saying, but I would also say, you know, nickel and dime where you can, but don't cut the services. You have to stay on brand. You know, if your restaurant is, you want to, your, you want your customers 
to see what you want your restaurant to be. Um, this is going to end sooner or later. You know, you've got to hang in there. But when we come through this, you know, people want to be able to come back to a restaurant and say, it's as good then as it is now. You know, um, that was one of the biggest things that I had to fight with my partners on was like, listen, we'll cut the menu, but we're not going to strip it. Right. We're not going to go. We, if we don't do what we've always done, if we don't stay on brand and give people what they're used to, they're not going to come. So right. we, we, we stuck with that and be brave. Just be brave. You know, the customers will come. They'll see the effort. They'll see the grind. They'll, they'll, they'll be appreciative of it. Not everybody, but you know what? That's the world we live in. So just uh, stick with what you're doing. Believe in yourself. Nickel and dime where possible, but just push forward. Just keep pushing. That's what we are as caterers. That's what we are as restaurateurs. We always push, push for excellence. All right. Thank you both very much. Go have a great week. Peace. Keep that your success. And uh, if anyone has any questions or anything we talked about, send us an email. Easy, easy. We'll get responses and help. We're here to help, honestly. Anybody we can help, the better, right? Thanks, guys. Awesome. Thank, Thank you, you, Michael. Thank you, Elizabeth and Brendan. And just as a reminder to all of our attendees, we will have a recording of this session live in the coming week. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. And thank you again for joining us live at your table. Have a great day. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Bye.